It's a time where we can tell ourselves all oh, selfish agenda, let it go in Jesus' name. Let it go in Jesus' name. The church was supposed to reach so many nations that, that you don't find all these Muslim nations. But the church didn't do that and may God forgive us, us as a church collectively. But you must understand how we can be in prayer. Is it not if today we pray for your child, we pray for your sister, we pray for your mom or your dad or your uncle or your grandma or your grandpa, that the prayer will have an impact 20 kilometers from here. Hello. 500 kilometers from here. Now what about 12 kilometers from here? Definitely the same. What a ridiculous statement to wonder about it. So your prayer can be right there where things are happening. So when you look at the news, and I challenge you to look at the news a few times, maybe some clips, and I want you to see yourself there, there where that man is crying out, there where the, that guy is cursing, where that, that woman is manifesting with her husband who died and don't know where's the kids. Put yourself next to that person as if you are standing there and you are praying your prayer, because your prayer is there if you Pray by faith under the guidance of the Spirit. Your prayer is there. God has called us to have impact in the nations. Hello? The truth will set us free. Everything will fall, but the word of God will stand. We can see the buildings fall. But so you must know, in the strongholds of nations, in the strongholds of your mind, of your heart, those buildings, the things... Just in the name of Jesus, it can fall. That what we've built wrong for years can fall by God's grace in the name of Jesus. That must fall. That must fall. But guys, let's not be super spiritual. So many people drawing more demonic spirits, more demonic... Um, Manifestations from hell into themselves with hatred, with judgment, with revenge, with bitterness, with unforgiveness, with racism, with all those stuff. Calling the demons to come and dwell in them and with them. Right now. Warfare is not against flesh and blood. But will there be a church? Will the church in the nations rise, get mature? coming to maturity that they will understand and we need to block this. No, no, no. The nations is the inheritance of our God. It's the inheritance to be brought at the feet of Jesus. His inheritance. We have the honor to work with the Holy Spirit to bring it to the feet of Jesus as the inheritance because he died. He paid. He gave everything for the nations. He died for every Palestinian. He died for every Jew. <sighs> But what a shame if the church will not rise and cover through the blood of Christ then with mercy, mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord, in prayer. Pathetic if we will take sides. People that are too spiritual about the Jews. People that are standing against that what is wrong on the other side. Oh, man. God has not called you to do that. God has called you for a ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5. God entrusted, entrusted, God entrusted. He trusts you with a ministry of reconciliation. He trusts you that today, tomorrow, tonight, you will put out that prayer for reconciliation. For who? Jew with their God. Palestinian with their God. Hezbollah with their God. The Iran guy, the Iraq Hello? That they will be reconciled with God. Why? They've been bought by the blood. Not Muhammad, not anything else, no one else, no circumstance can claim them except if that man and woman, woman give themselves to, to that circumstance. You can give yourself to bitterness. I don't want to say like a prostitute. But I mean, you've been bought with a price. You belong to Christ. Now I can flirt with intimacy, with 
judgment, bitterness, revenge, fear, hatred. I can flirt with those things like a, a woman that's not faithful towards her husband. You cannot commit adultery. Adulterer. When I flirt with all these other stuffies, when you see that video clip, when you look at the news, put yourself there. And your prayer will have the impact. Believe that. Amen. You pray. And as you pray in the will of God, the word says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do. Oh, I ask her for a Ferrari in Jesus' name. Boom. No, no, no. Whatever you ask according to my will, this word will not return empty to God. So you speak for the church. Push the word of God over the Gaza, Gaza Strip. Push the word into Israel. Push the word into Lebanon and Syria and Iraq and Iran and those places. Push the word into that place because the word will stand. The building's not necessary, but the word will stand. But when we find those Christians that will do that, may God help us. May God help you. Forget about yourself. Think about them. Amen. In a time like this, what, what do they do? The commander in chief says, 300,000 men to be called up. And 300,000 Jews are called up in right position, waiting for the commander in chief just to say, get in there. And then thousands and thousands and thousands could die horrific deaths. But for some reason, they are willing to give themselves. How much more? we supposed to be called up called out by the commander-in-chief jesus christ that you have a personal relationship with they don't have a personal relationship with the president of israel hello and they don't evaluate did the commander-in-chief do what i asked him before because i'm a little bit not lacquer with him because he didn't do what i asked him to do I ask him to provide him this time. I ask him about this girl or about this man. I ask him to set me free about this and this didn't happen. And I trusted him for this and that didn't happen. I first have some, some stuff to deal with the commander in chief. What a hell of a lot of arrogance. We repent from that right now in Jesus' name. But what about you have respect for the commander in chief? To do what he says, to have the faith, first of all, you must have respect for him. You cannot believe this word. You cannot believe God unless you first have respect for the word, respect for God. Amen. You start where the devil starts. At least he has respect for God. He knows if Jesus opens his mouth and says, go, they need to go. So you start with what at least the devil believes. Satan has that respect for God. Knowing when God says, this is finished, it's finished. But then you go further beyond where the devils are. And you have a faith that pleases God. A faith that honors God. A faith that saves you from that what is from hell and the flesh. But at least do what the devils do. Have respect for God. And when he says, leave believe that you stand with authority when you respect god you accept his authority you accept let's say i will respect i will accept god's authority because i choose to respect him therefore when you pray if you respect god you pray with authority you see yourself you see the christians in that place and how they stand there and say the people underneath. You see yourself standing on that rubble. People crying out because kids are down there. Mum, grandmother is somewhere there. And we need to leave. You stand there and you say, you will be saved. You will be saved. You will experience God. Let it not be a martyrdom, Lord Jesus, that they will suffer. But if they must go and see you, let them see you now so that when they see you, they will not go to hell, but they will go to heaven. Let them see you now and accept you now there under the rubble. See yourself in that picture. 
Because what? Your prayer can be there if you respect God, if you have faith in him and do what his word says. Are you with me? Guys, we can have impact in the nations and that's a calling on this ministry that we will set continents alight. What type of word is that? It's not something to, wow. That means the death must be more intense. We must get rid of ourselves so that we will be God and God alone. Amen. Impact. When we, when we wanted to when we did the production, Blood Speaks, there's a lot of photos of um, the theatre production that we did here in the San Lucas Theatre. Last year we did Hope in the House. No, this year. What's this year? Yeah, where am I? Sure. A lot of things happened from Hope in the House production we did there. Previous times, three times we did Blood Speaks production every time with about 600 people. Awesome. But it started about 23 years ago. 23, 24 years? Ah, 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 I agree. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> okay, what am I saying? <laughs> no, that was, I must have now the interpretation of those words. What did I try to say? <laughs> Somebody help me uh, with my focus. Don't scream at me, man. I must say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, 23 years ago, man. I had an, uh, was in a, with an outreach in Israel. We worked under the Palestinian guys. Ish, 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 ish. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Christians standing with the Lord. And then one day in Jerusalem, I heard about the story about the Armenians that became the first Christian nation and how God spoke to the Armenians, how through the blood of forgiveness, blood of forgiveness, they became the first Christian nation. Powerful, powerful, powerful story of forgiveness. And then later how prophetically God told the nation to leave Ar Armenia because there's a great tribulation coming. And then thousands left uh, uh, Armenia, even that today there's more Armenians in America, in America and uh, Europe than in Armenia itself. But 1.5 million were slaughtered with rivers that's red, 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 red from Lada. Let me not go into the detail. Now, horrific, horrific, horrific. And, the, and God said to me, with that story, we must make a movie. Oh, we didn't make a movie. We, we did a small production in a school, then a better one in a school, then a better one in a school, then a better one, and then a theater production. And then a group of 12 that went through the nation. But God's going to help us what to do and how to do it next. Hello? But as we started to pray about this movie, and we prayed in the spirit, we prayed that over the nations, blood speaks, blood speaks, blood speaks. There will be forgiveness. They will understand forgiveness through the blood that speaks. They will understand forgiveness through the blood that speaks. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed in go meetings with students. They were, you know, some students are sitting. Not leaders. No, leaders are just 100% holy. But <laughs> Emil, can you believe it? But what are we saying? My brother and my sister, you pray in the spirit. You pray and you put it out there. And if you are serious about the agenda of prayer, God will put you into his agenda. So we prayed about through the blood of Christ, people must understand forgiveness. But at that time, God is busy with a man in another place in America about an agenda about forgiveness. So what happened? One day I stopped the guys and I said, I believe we must pray for Mel Gibson. Now we laughed. I also, we first laughed, and you, half of you know the story. Now you can pray that we will do it again. God will show us. And we said, Mel Gibson, oh, the Patriot, and what's the other one? What's the good? Braveheart, and some of those movies. Bull, gruesome. I didn't know, we didn't know he was in any way a little bit Christian, even. So we prayed. And I said, no, we must pray that he will make this movie, Blood Speaks, about forgiveness, and that blood speaks about forgiveness. And so we pray. 
We sent even to his agent, to, to his company, whatever, we sent faxes. I don't know, 10, 20. Louis Yeffer was one of them that were very involved with that. That we sent faxes. That he must portray forgiveness through this movie, the Armenian story, that through the blood of Christ there's forgiveness. And the blood that speaks of revenge and blood that speaks of forgiveness. We didn't know anything about passion of Christ. That at that moment, in those two years, that we prayed for two years for Mel Gibson, that he will do this movie. God is, he, we didn't know he was busy making passion of Christ, about the blood of Christ that speaks of forgiveness. So what happened, while we were praying, 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 after about, I don't know, let's say a year, I said to the guys, guys, we mustn't pray about blood speaks anymore. I didn't say that that way this morning. We mustn't pray that Mel Gibson must make this movie. We must pray that he will portray Christ in his blood like never ever anybody has done before with a high age restriction. Oh, you can ask some of the leaders. They were there when I said that. What happened? When you seriously start to pray into the agenda of God, God will lock you into his agenda wherever in the world with his agenda. We pray that through the blood of forgiveness, this movie, Blood Speaks, will have an impact in the world, impact in the world for more than a year. And God says, Mel Gibson. And God says, leave, Blood Speaks movie. He must portray Christ in his blood with a high age restriction like nobody have done ever before. And I said that. And we sent faxes. As confirmation, hopefully, I don't know if he got it ever. I hope if he got it, it was powerful money, powerful encouragement maybe for certain decisions he had to make at that time. God can lock you with your prayer into any nation, into any agenda, wherever in the world, what he has. Are you with me? We were through the roof after a year that we heard, but he is doing that. Hello? Okay, let's cry about it, you know. Okay, at least that time we were through the roof because we saw how as we, as we pushed with prayer and even pushed that we are tired of praying, praying and blah, 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 and it just happened. So we got to the end of the millennium in 1999. And in that year, we were praying still. Because now we heard, and we said, whoa, whoa. But now we started to pray that God will really do a major thing. And once I told him, no, 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 no. Guys, I get the name Cliff Richard. I mean, we are now with Mel Gibson. We thought it was heck ridiculous. And then, whoa. Now Cliff Richard here in England, you don't know him. But for three decades, he was very sharp with the music. You don't know, he's long before your time. But he's not any musician, any band that can stay up there for three decades. Uh-uh. You don't get easily a band that will stay up there with new music for three decades. But this man in England, I said, we must pray that he will bring out a Christian song at the end of the millennium. Okay. And they looked at me like some of you guys are looking at me now. No. You know, your face can give a message. Okay, Pastor, when are we finishing? <laughs> okay, not one of you guys, but the guys that are not here today. But in any case, bottom line. Okay, so we are sending faxes and try to make contact with Cliff Richard as if you can do it. To England, that he must bring out a Christian song at the end of the millennium. And God said that that will be also a sign that that what must be portrayed in Christ's blood will have an impact. Okay, end of the millennium, yay. We took a crisis champion with a cross and everything, the production we took to table view. Oh, it was amazing. With Creari, all the students, all the leaders, and a lot of extra, we went to table view. We had an open air thing with the turn of the millennium, with a table view, table mountain view. 
there and the cross and the stage and we did the whole production that's how we went into the year 2000 that was amazing awesome but two months later one of the guys that studied at Creari was in London L how do you say L London L London and uh, got a letter or I can't remember even I think a letter from them because yeah must be because there was a newspaper clip in there of the newspapers mocking the broadcasters saying now that Cliff reaches Christian song with the turn of the millennium now that that Christian song became one of the best sellers in England are you going to broadcast it now that's a newspaper because they said it's too Christian they're not going to broadcast it it's not for the general public they're not going to broadcast Cliff Richards Christian song it was we were so encouraged we were so encouraged my brother and my sister if you push in the spirit with the agenda God will open up prophetically for you things where he is busy in the nation in the nations with his agenda and at that moment he has an agenda so the cliff reaches song that many people many 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 people and many 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 nations know that guy they will hear that song and it was on the old Lang Syre melody you know the song some of you guys our father who knows the song three four and he goes like something like uh, our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name it's just plainly that and with and the nations will say amen the nations will say amen the nations will say amen for the dream that father has for them that's powerful words basically just the word of god being sung and that song was out there i'm just saying you better in this time get into the right place so that you can lock into with God's agenda. God will speak to you. Because tomorrow there's five small churches coming together. Those who are left, who still believe in God as a God of love in, among the Palestinians. Those five small churches, they're going to come together. Three from that church, five from that church, ten from that church, and twenty from this church. And they're going to pray. They don't know if they're going to be bombed and be gone in an hour because you don't know where the Messiah is going to go. But they're going to pray. They're going to come together and they're going to pray. Even if it's their last 20 minutes. And tomorrow evening, 6.30, they are praying. You know what's going to happen? You're going to have a few guys in the world. That at that time, that are sensitive. That are not so stupid to be selfish. But at that moment, that are sensitive in the spirit. That at that moment... I think we were just praying in tongues, and, oh, and you just start to pray in tongues. But you don't know your tongue is an intercessory prayer that's locking into a 40 guys desperately seeking God in, there in the Gaza Strip that is crying out to God, that is willing to, to be bombed, to be blown up in any time now for the ne in the next 20 minutes. You have an impact in the nations. You have an impact in the nations. If you get over yourself... Have faith that when you open your mouth and you pray, that God can take that prayer anywhere in the world. But you say, please, Lord, I trust you that you will take my prayer and put it like a puzzle piece in the spirit there or there or there in the Gaza Strip or in Israel or at Hezbollah or in Iran, wherever you want to put this puzzle piece out of my mouth. Go and put it there, please, Lord. For we failed. We didn't go and give the gospel. Go there for make disciples. We didn't do it. But please God, supernaturally, can you please take this prayer and let it have an impact there. And you even can pray it before the time. Then you pray in tongues. And after a while praying in tongues, because praying in tongues telling your mind to shut up. Hey, when you pray in tongues, your mind is unfruitful. Your spirit is alive. Spirit is in line, praying there, and your mind is getting in line with the spirit purposes of God. The spirit will always pray according to the word of God, the perfect will of God. So you have the capacity to pray the perfect will of God over Gaza.
the perfect will of God over Israel, the perfect will of God over the nations. You have that capacity if me and you get over ourselves that it's not just about me and my agenda and my house. Maybe look at the news and see what they need to go through. Let's have a wake-up call. Because my brother, my sister, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestinians, and the rest of the, that world. That's just the beginning. That's the beginning of a lot more that we will see. And may you and we be wise enough to position ourselves on the truth of the word. Like we said last time, that God wants to brag about Christ as the foundation. Father wants to brag about his son. And every man and woman and family that builds, every nation that builds on the foundation, the revelation of who his son is, that house is going to stand when the storm comes. You look at it with excitement, with excitement, with expectation and faith to your life, our church, other churches in the nations. You're looking with faith and excitement that the house will stand because it will be revealed to all the nations and the world and billions of people. Why can that house still stand? Because it's the revelation of Christ. Jesus is God. There's no other God. Jesus is the Son of God. He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that revelation must get in there so that Jesus can come again. Because that must happen in the storm. Christ is revealed. And so that from that place, with only the house built on the rock, will stand from that place, gospel into all the nations, and then the end will come. You will hear about earthquakes, you will hear about wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and pestilence and all that. But that's not the end. And all these things will happen. It will be great pain, great tribulation. And then the gospel will be preached to all the nations and then the end will come. Jesus will come for a victorious bride. Victoria's bride, the bride weighs nothing about themselves, nothing about my gift, what I can do where people can say, whoa, because when you look there, devil's left. <laughs> no, for the guys that have the capacity, the maturity, where it's nothing about them and it's all about him. Let your life become Christ and die become gain. There are guys willing to die in the name of Muhammad and Allah. And they are willing to do whatever, whatever their commanding chief is saying. And they will see it as an honor to be blown up. An honor to die. An honor to die. It's a pattern that Satan saw, that hell saw, that works in the word of God. That works in the kingdom of God. A pattern that Jesus Christ shown with his father. And he was given the name above all other names. Hell knows what that pattern can do. So hell must duplicate it with people that will follow a Hitler and just slaughter and uh, kill six million Jews. That pattern can work. In that time, listen to uh, Uncle Angus that he said uh, in the message of this morning, that he said, in that time with that six million Jews with uh, gas chambers, there were people of the faith. Men with a collar, the people full-time in ministry that threw it out, said, I turn away from Christ. I don't follow him anymore. I don't believe there's a God anymore. How can a God of love do this? Oh, guys, when your theology is shaken, when Psalm 91 does not really work for you anymore, when I, God will command his angels to protect you in all your ways, where is that God in Gaza? Where is that God in Israel that you commit your ways unto the Lord and his hand will be over you, his angels will be a wall of fire around you, this, that, 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 that. How do you interpret a thousand scriptures? Like I told you in the past with Ukraine and Russia also. What is the type of gospel that we believe? What is the type of gospel that you believe today? You better get ready with the right gospel. Because the whole earth will be shaken. The whole earth will be shaken. And out of the whole earth that will be shaken, 
in desperation, something is going to stand up and people are going to say, whoa, that's the answer. That's, that's the man of peace. You know that, the Antichrist, more and more. But the Antichrist is a spirit that is against Christ, that is already working all over from the time of when Christ was born. But the spirit of Antichrist will be seen, the fullness of the authority of the demonic forces of Antichrist that is against Christ. Like a person, a lady can be arrested because she had silent prayer against, <laughs> what was that, the abortion clinic. Wow, man, the world knows. The devil knows the authority of prayer. If the devil organizes a woman in silent prayer at an abortion clinic to be arrested, that's just such an encouragement that hell knows the impact of prayer. Okay, let's cry about it. Hey, smack your brother and say, hey, are you still here? Okay, are you with me? Just say yes or amen or something. Okay, okay. So please, go and do that. Please go and do that. I'm telling you, first time God said to me, go for a week and fast and pray. Oh, man. The fast is rough until the third day. After the third day, you don't feel so hungry anymore. Who, 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 who experienced that? After the third day, it's like, you're okay. Can you believe it? And, uh, okay, I must go maybe again. But <laughs> in any case, and someday I don't know what to do. You know, I've prayed and I'm finished praying now. No, no, what now? Get into the word, start to read the word, read the word, read the word. And it's like manifestations, like... I want to scream out of boredom or out of, okay, this is now finished. Get your thoughts into the place of getting to the word, getting to prayer. Are you with me? You won't believe it, what can happen and how you can lock into God's agenda. How you can lock into God's agenda. Are you with me? I mean, I've told you the story for the three that doesn't know the story. Um, just hear it, the rest pray that you will have a better story. Okay, here he comes. So, uh, when I worked after the two years army, um, for a year and a half in the gospel song group, three people singing and singing the gospel, leading people to the Lord, major things, demons manifest, um, people set free, a lot of things, an awesome, awesome time. God said, not second year in Bear Bible school, year and a half, pay off all your debt. From the medical bursary. Worked in Pretoria. I said, God, where must I stay? God showed me a place. And I said, when you stay there, that's where the guys come from. The, the bums, the, the, the boomer layers. What is a boomer layer in English? Homeless people. Oh, very good word. And uh, if they don't stay in the, on, the, on the street, they stay there. I stayed there. Three bathrooms on the whole floor with about 30 rooms. I don't want to tell you. Biggest account was Dettol and Savlon. <laughs> to clean that place before you can use the bath or whatever. But we're wasting time. What did I want to say? In that time, I worked at the city council at one stage. So from the city center where I stayed, there was this German guy, atheist. He would go with his big bike, a German on a big bike, not a good thing. From city center out to the other side of the N1 every day, and I got a lift from this guy. He always said, we cannot share the petrol 50-50 because you have angels. You believe in God, so you and your angels are more than just me. You must pay more than 50%. Thank it. Cuckoos. But this one night, I just felt to pray in tongues. It was something beyond 8 o'clock. I prayed in tongues for like 15 minutes, and that was it. The next day, at the, at the work, this guy said, last night I drove, but I mean, he's like 160 or whatever, on the gravel road. Now, he was in more than 10 accidents already. And the next moment, I caught the sandbank there, 
sandbank on the side of the of the gravel road and the car's supposed to zoom 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 and as i caught it i didn't even say that in the first service i said jesus but he was like i don't want to tell you this actually but he said but i said jesus and the next moment the car just stood still He told me that. Later, I realized, I asked him, when was it? Just after eight. Just after eight. And God revealed himself. There was not somebody evangelizing him there. Are you with me? God can reveal himself in this season, in this time. Amazingly, let your prayer be out there. That rhymes. Let's say, let my prayer be out there. Are you with me? Go, man. Have, have that impact. Okay, last one. Just an example. Also, half of you know the story. How I bought a house and then a second house long ago. With a salary that is basically the same or less than my Monthly installment. It cannot happen like that. The banks look at everything, how what you get. And if you want to have a 3,000 installment for a house, you must at least have a 9,000 salary. Mine was, salary was less than 3,000. So pathetic to think you can apply for a bank loan and you have a salary of 2,000 something. And you must pay the bank 3,000 a month. And the bank said yes. So, bought the house. The next year, we need another house for Crowdy students. And uh, you really know the story of Pick a House, remember? Pick a House. The pick a House went, it wasn't in the market. Asked the lady, uh, I'm your neighbor from nine months ago. I want to buy your house. Um, I know it's not for sale. Can we? She said, yeah. <sighs> we wanted to move already, but come and see us. Went to see them, me and Peter Jones. Uh, they said, they will move for 320000 I said, I want it in three months' time. They said, yes. Hallelujah. God said, no. God said, salvation. I said, Lord, can we please Monday just sign the deal? Tuesday, I lead the guy to you, and Wednesday, take him to the cell. Give the Lord some, some vision and strategy. He didn't accept that. So for ten times up and down... And I said, how are you and the Lord? He swear, don't go there. She's going to church. She's with the Bible, me and God, no. And God said, keep on, keep on. 15 minutes became two hours. In the end, after two hours, many times that he would say, no. The doctor said I had to be there two years ago because half of his intestines gone uh, out. Um, nurse staying with him in the house for longer than a year. I said, I don't know why I'm not dead. I said, the only reason why you're alive is because you need to give your life to Christ. He, he taught me his life. I said, you know you're going to burn in hell. Why? That's not the average way to evangelize. But I said that to the guy. And I said, maybe ten times, the only reason why you live is because you must give your life to Christ. He said, no. And he got angry. I said, I'm not leaving here until you give your life to Christ. After two hours, he gave his life to Christ. He said, cry and he said i must pray for his children i said i'm not going to pray you are the father you your prayer is more effective as a father you pray for your children we agree with you on his knees prayed for his kids that was saturday evening wednesday i phone i want to know if the deal is still on with the house and i want to invite him to the cell great spoke to the son can i speak to your dad please he said no i said is he is he angry at me he said no he's dead I stood there, I remember that moment, <laughs> goosebumps. Basically, I led him to the Lord Saturday evening, Sunday afternoon, he died within 24 hours. I didn't experience an anointing to say, the only reason why you live is because you must give your life to Christ. I spoke like I spoke now, like I'm speaking now. Just say, just, just, I just said it. 
Shocking how just in a natural way, my brother, my sister, God can guide you. You pray a normal, simple prayer tonight, just now in the service, wherever, in a meeting tomorrow, while you're driving, praying in tongues. You experience nothing. But it can have a major impact. Major impact. So, went to the funeral at the Dutch Reformed Church. Uh, one, there's one guy, he came to me, he said, did you lead my brother to the Lord just before he died? I said, God organized that. He said, come, come with me. He said to me on the way, my mother is alive, she's still here. She's over 90 years old. Four sons. Three of us gave our lives to Christ for the past 10 years. She's praying for this fourth child. The other three, they surrender to Christ, walking with Christ. But this one out of the four, he's not walking with God. Went to her, I told her the story on the fear at the funeral that a child gave her life to Christ the evening before he died. I remember her shaking in tears. <laughs> she just said, I, my child, do you know what I prayed? I said, I will not know, my auntie. She said, I prayed, God, save my son like the sinner on the cross. I said, my auntie, he did it just like that. But what, why am I telling you the story again? Because I want to remind you that I went there with an agenda. I'm trusting God. I'm speaking to God. The agenda to get this house, to get this house, to get this house. God locked me into the agenda of somebody that prayed something over this man. I will first answer the prayer of my daughter that prayed a prayer for 10 years before I will listen to what you have to say. That's what God did. And I was pushed against my will. I was even frustrated. <laughs> Arguing, pushed with the prayer of this old lady of 10 years into that agenda and led the man to the Lord. But I was overruled by the prayer of an old auntie for 10 years. Can you hear what I'm saying? You pray. And if you experience nothing for years, you pray. Because somebody, somebody will be pushed into the agenda that God has for a person where you pray in tongues or you pray something according to God's will over a person, over a nation. You pray for Pal Palestinians. You pray for the Israelis. You pray for nations to come before the throne of God. It will happen. It will happen. You have the fight and if you don't see it, the next generation will see it. David had the fight upon fight upon fight upon fight. Even fight with his own son that wanted to kill him. Even a fight with the man who, want, who he served. Saul, the, his, his leader wanted to, who saw him as a son. That, the one that saw him as a son wanted to slaughter him. The one that was his son wanted to slaughter him. What a life. But then look at the Psalms, how he reached out to God. How he reached out to God. How he prayed in the Psalms. How he prayed, how he prayed, how he reached out. And the result, and so much more, 100% harvest in his son. No enemy come against him. And he just walked in and built this temple of God and a palace for himself. And the wisdom from God from heaven and the riches from earth. Yeah, was his. He saw the fruit. There will be fruit. There will be a place where the presence of God will come into the nations. Where a generation will just get in and build. Get in and build the temple of God. Get in and build the home of God. The house of God. It will just happen. But if you are part of the generation like David. You pray that into being so that the Solomons at the end of the day can build the house. Are you willing to do that? May God help you. May God help me. So this is what I said in the first service before I started with a sermon. In Ephesians 2, my day word. So I think I will just, like I did before, just read you what I wanted to preach about. Last time it was also Ephesians 2. And we talked about you've been crucified with Christ, died with Christ, 
buried with Christ, raised with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places. We said, what are you doing with your resurrection? You've been resurrected with Christ. What are you doing? You got it today. If you don't, uh, you're not on the home family group, get uh, on the WhatsApp, uh, no, blah, 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 on the YouTube, our Father's Home channel. I'll give your name to us. We can put you on the, on the group. Bottom line, it's talking about that, talking about how you are saved by grace and not through your own works. And not through your own works. Nothing through your own works can save you. But then he says, but because we are his workmanship created to work. You are created to work. Can you believe it? Created to do. Created to do the good works that God has prepared for you in advance to do. That is where you are. But then he's going into the fact that you find the Jews and you find the Gentiles. Today we are sitting, this is a day with, and today we're sitting with, we see the Jews and we see a lot of Gentiles. All children of Abram. Abram with Ishmael, Abram with Isaac. Now you see all these guys and some come to Christ. And what is he saying? And that's what you pray, my brother. You go and see Ephesians 2, please. Please. Okay. You were excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Every Palestinian in Gaza, every Jew is brought near to God because of the blood of Christ. They are so near to be saved. They are so near to salvation. They are so near to accept Christ. What is hindering for them to make the decision? Me and you, they're supposed to pray them in, supposed to speak to them, to speak over them, to declare over them. Okay. I see some of you in your mind, you're already at home. Come back. So in Jesus' name. Okay. For he himself is our peace who has made two groups, two groups, two groups, the heathen and the Israelis, one, and has destroyed the barrier. He has destroyed the barrier. Oh, you see the walls and all those stuffies. Yeah. The barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. By setting aside in his flesh the law with his commands and the regulations, his purpose was, why, why, why? His purpose was to create in himself, in himself, one new humanity out of the two. That's making peace. And this, in this one body, to reconcile both of them to God. In this one body. Where, where is this one body? The body of Christ. The only true way nations will become one. True peace, true peace is in the body of Christ. So where's the body of Christ under the Palestinians? Where's the body of Christ under the Jews, those who serve Christ? They are the key for unity. Where in the days of apartheid? Where? Where? How can it happen? Where's the Christian under the Sutu? Where's the Christian under the Afrikaner, under the English? Where? They're supposed to be making the difference. A lot of things went, went wrong. Where's the, the Christian among the English and Christian among the Bura? Oh, they hated one another. The Bura hated the English. Yay, because of what they done. In Christ, through the blood. Respect the blood, then you will forgive. Before you say, I cannot forgive him, you must first say, I will not respect the blood. I will not respect what Christ has done on the cross. That's why I cannot forgive. That's the only reason why you cannot forgive. Because you don't respect the blood. Because your issue is greater than what Christ has done on the cross. My brother and my sister, take it for yourself also. You forgive yourself for that wrong decisions, please. Why? Because you're never ever going to make a mistake again. No, because you respect the blood more than you respect your mistake. Please, okay? You take your forgiveness. So that you can also forgive others. Hallelujah. Are we with one another? We're going to the end. To reconcile them in one body. Through the cross of Christ. By which he put to death the hostility. 
the hostility. We see hostility among nations now. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access, access to the Father by one spirit. Access to the Father by one spirit. You pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to the Jews, speak to the Palestinians, speak to other nations, speak to the church, to come in line and grow up and become mature. Amen. Consequently, you, have no longer, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone. Built. Say, I'm built. I'm not talking about built. <laughs> You are built. First of all, you're living stone. Peter says to the church, you are living stone. Why? Christ in you makes you the temple of the Holy Spirit and you're a living stone. You're not the home of God. When you are a temple of the Spirit, you're just a living stone. And because Holy Spirit is in you, he's in you with an agenda. Agenda. Everybody say agenda. Church means ecclesia. Ecclesia means called out. Called out for an agenda. If you are part of the church... And you are the church means I'm here on earth with an agenda. That's what it's saying. Zing Chong Chong Jani was the president of uh, the, the Jew, uh, Israel. No, say it like I can hear it. That guy. <laughs> he called out 300,000 soldiers. And when he called them out, boom. Day or two or three, everybody called out. Why? Because they must be called up. Oh, nice. Let's go and have some pizza. They are only called up because there's an agenda. Church is only church because there's an agenda. Church means called out, called up from the rubbish, from the darkness, from the flesh. Out of the darkness into his marvelous light to do, to do, to do, to do something. To declare his marvelous deeds, his marvelous praise. To declare the beauty of our God and his awesome works. There is an agenda. You are not dead in the sense of in heaven now. You're not in heaven now. Why? Why are you here on earth? To waste time. You are here because God has an agenda with you. Tell your neighbor, God has an agenda with you. Uh, are you with me? So you better find out what's the agenda. They're not they're those 300,000. They are not somewhere because for whatever, I don't know. They are waiting and if, there's, if there is a command coming through, Within a few seconds, each one will respond. All 300,000. Oh, what a day. If the Holy Spirit could speak to the church. And it's like within a few seconds, the churches in nations will respond. Oh, what a day. That will be a major revival. <laughs> Are you with me? You better find out God's agenda. So that you could lock into the spirit. In God's agenda, with Gaza Strip, with Jerusalem, with all those places. We, we can sing about Jerusalem. And the city in the world that is the biggest mockery of peace is Jerusalem. Because you have the Israelis, the Jews. You have the Muslims. You have the Christians. And the ridiculous part is the fourth one is the Armenians. <laughs> Armenians, yeah, about the story of blood speaks. But bottom line, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's not about that Jerusalem. Hey, peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem means the habitation of peace, where peace dwells. Christ is the peace. We are part of the new Jerusalem if we understand how to live in the peace of Christ with one another and with him. Because then we are building as living stones what? The home of God we go for the for the landing in him the whole building whole building 
is joined together and rises to become. Everybody say, become. You're a living stone. You must be squashed next to another brother or sister. On top of another one, another one on top of you, the living stones. Okay? To become a holy temple, that means temple set aside in the Lord. And in Him, you are too being built together to become. Everybody say, to become. A dwelling, a home in which God lives by His Spirit. Our Father's home is what we busy becoming. We are becoming our Father's home. If you work with God and we are willing to be pushed together as living stones with people that sometimes irritate you, sometimes you not necessarily like. You need to love them, you don't need to like them, luckily. But in loving them, respect what God is doing. Respect that He's building a home. Jesus Christ building a home. You remember what we said? Jesus Christ building his church, but he's going to give his church as a home for the Father. Father building the church, but the Father is going to give the church as a bride to his Son. Amen. May the one dwelling in you because of the agenda of the Father guide you. The one dwelling in you, the Holy Spirit. Why? Why not that and with the Father and the Holy Spirit in you? Because Father has agenda with you. Father has agenda with you. He has called you up. You are like one of the 3,000. There you are ready to invade the kingdom of darkness, to invade the nation, to invade the education, to invade the hospital, to invade the university, to invade Bloemfontein. You are ready to invade in the name of Jesus Christ to bring people to Christ. To claim back what is God's. They are there to claim back what they believe is theirs. And the Palestinians are resisting because they believe, they claim back and they will Hold on to what they believe is theirs. Why can the Christians not walk into what they believe is God's? The nations belong to your father. The nations belongs to your father because he sent his son so that they can be bought for him. Get into God's agenda. In whatever you do, education, sport, whatever business, but walk into his agenda in this season. There's no time for other stuff. Help us, God. We need your help, Lord. I pray that you will come and speak to every man, woman in this place. Holy Spirit, let your hand, the Father's hand, be strong over every man and woman. In the night time, wake them up to pray at the right time. In the day, in the car, wherever they go. God, I pray for every member, every person walking with us, that we will have a sensitivity in the Spirit. Those guys in many nations that are walking with us, Lord, that there will be a sensitivity in the Spirit like never before. Help us, Lord. Lord, just like in the, in the past, what happened with major international agendas into nations. God, help us to lock into that place by making us, first of all, faithful for, through your grace to pray. To stand in the gap, to be in the gap, to carry it in the womb for the birthing of, of nations revived through your spirit. Let it be so, but start with us. Help us. Burn through your holy fire every piece of rubbish out of our lives. Burn through your holy fire every piece of rubbish out of our lives. Every relationship that is rubbish. Every relationship where, where Satan is honored. Where hell is manifested in those relationships. God, help us to get out of that rubbish. But bring us into a place where you are honored in every relationship. First, our relationship with you. That you are honored in our relationship with ourselves. But that we will live the dream that you have for us and for the nations. So in Jesus' name we pray and all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Let it be so.